Welcome to All Bodies on Bikes, the podcast, where all bodies are good bodies, all bikes are good bikes, and all rides should be celebrated. All Bodies on Bikes is a movement to create and foster a size-inclusive bike community. So join your hosts. I'm Maggie. And I'm Marley. As we explore the complexities of the biking world, help us break down barriers and create the world that we want to see. And don't forget that all bodies really means all bodies, not just larger bodies, but bodies of all sizes, ages, races, abilities, genders, sexualities, and beyond. Come along for the ride. Welcome back to the All Bodies on Bikes podcast. Maggie, it has been a minute. It's been so many minutes. How are you doing, friend? It's been so many minutes. I'm I'm great. How are you? Uh, I'm not great, but I'm okay. Um, oh, okay. We're just having that like post-event come down. Um, I don't know if we've oh, ever yeah. talked about it on the show before, but, um, you know, and especially after Mid-South, um, there's just a lot of feelings happening right now and kind of having a massive dopamine crash. Like, yeah. It's real hard to go to like the most epic weekend and get hugs from every single person you know and love and then to come home to like my sad, lonely life in Bentonville. I mean, I didn't even get the fun of being there. So I'm now dealing with FOMO for my FOMO. Mm, That's fair. You know what I mean? Yeah. Not to like, you know, what's it called? Like rub dirt in a wound or rub salt Mm -hmm. in a wound. But you missed a really good weekend. Yeah. Oh, I could tell. I had to turn off Slack notifications because I was like, I will spend my entire weekend hating my life if I don't turn off Slack notifications. And then I forgot Instagram was a thing. Yeah. That just means we have to get you out there next year. So Exactly. Yes. Um, Well, to bring the listeners in, um, Mid-South Gravel just happened. It's one of my favorite events of the entire calendar. um, And it's such a fun way to kick off the gravel cycling season. Um, This was my third year attending. It happens in Stillwater, Oklahoma. um, And I've Maybe folks remember, I don't know. Um, I was DFL last year. Yeah, you were. Um, and DFL means dead effing last, um, the very last person <laughs> to come across the finish line. And at most races, it's not a big deal. You're lucky if like the finish line is still there. Um, but yep. Mid South um has always, I think has always, this is like the twelfth year, um, has always made an effort to celebrate the back of the pack and make sure that they are Thank there. You. Um, when the last person comes in and, um, I know I had an absolutely surreal experience last year and we are lucky to have this year's DFL winner on the show with us today. Woo! Yeah. Um, and it's even cooler cause she's one of us. Um, she yeah. Um, she will, we'll talk all about her, but, um, we know Beth well, and, um, I was tracking her all day long. Um, I have so much to say about this. It's, it's wild. Um, so I rode the 58 mile. I was going to ride the hundred mile, um, for folks who listen every week, you probably know this, but, um, I'm so glad I made the decision to ride the 58 mile instead of the hundred. Cause it meant I got to go back and hang out and wait for all my friends to come in. Um, but also on top of that, all bodies on bikes um, through the official DFL party this year. Um, so we yes. teamed up with Ride with GPS, and um, you know I didn't have numbers for context because I was out riding last year, so I didn't know how many people were there. You know, you you come in, and Beth will attest to this in a few minutes, but it is just absolutely overwhelming, and you're lucky to like see the person in front of you, let alone 500 people, a thousand people that are there. But what I heard from everybody was that like. They had never seen anything like this before. You know, we we took over a bar. There was a photo booth. There was dancing. There was food. There was music. It was incredible. Um, and I think it's going to become a tradition. Um, I think All Bodies on Bikes is going to continue to throw the DFL party. Oh, which yeah. Is super, super fun. Um, but should we go ahead and introduce Beth and get into the, the really fun conversation? Yeah, we should. Cool. Do you want to read her bio? I would love to. Thanks, Maggie. I would love to introduce everyone to Beth. We love Beth. Uh, Beth McBride is our guest today. Beth lives in Lake Mills, Wisconsin. I'm going to pretend like I know state abbreviations. Is Wisconsin correct? That is correct. Yes. Great. <laughs> Beth lives in Lake Mills, Wisconsin, a small town near Madison, Wisconsin. 
and read a little further. She discovered the joy of cycling late in life and now finds every opportunity she can to ride bikes and to inspire folks who never thought they could be a cyclist to just get on a bike and ride. And that is Beth. And Beth, welcome to the All Bodies on Bikes podcast. Thank you so much for having me here. This still <laughs> seems like so unreal, like not like like even possible, right? So <laughs> had a great weekend with Marley and everybody at Mid-South. And Maggie, I know it's been a hot minute since we had a chance to talk. I think probably yes. SPT, right? In August yeah. was yeah, the last, last time August. we had a yeah, chance to talk. So yeah, so thank you so much. <laughs> um, so I can't remember if I already said this, but Beth was on our 2023 Steamboat Gravel team. Yes. Um, so we she's been part of our little community for over a year now. And it has been just so incredible to watch your journey. Um, so let's get into that a little bit. I know you've been chasing this gravel century for a long time now. Um, and you did it. So, you know, without even getting into the DFL stuff, because that's like a whole nother can of worms. What what is getting your hundred mile century? What does it mean to you? So I have to tell you that I've been practicing really hard um, today to talk about this without crying and tearing mm, up, but I don't yeah. know that I can. That's <laughs> like, fine. I'm that already okay. starting to cry a little bit. Um, but you know, a hundred mile bike ride—that's just like an achievement, right? It's like yeah. if you're a cyclist, that's something that you strive to do. Your hundred mile bike rides, you get your you know metric or imperial century in. Um, and I've been trying really hard to do this, right, for at least a year, if not a little bit longer than that. Um, and some of the some of the things, you know, that impede me are I'm slow. I'm not necessarily a fast cyclist, and there's not a lot of race events that are going to let you just keep on riding to get that done. I know I have the endurance, right, to get it done. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty gritty and committed you know, to riding and I love going long distances, but I've just never had an opportunity to be able to do that. Um, at SBT gravel last year, I had signed up for the hundred mile race and I, I knew it was a hard decision for me. I knew at that first cutoff that there was just no way I was going to be able to meet the time cutoff. So it was a very crushing feeling for me, mm -hmm. um, that I had to deal with. Um, so being able to finally get my century at mid South, I think is really special. Um, and I feel like this is the place where it was supposed to happen. It took me a long ass time <laughs> on that bike to get it. And I mean, I knew it was going to happen. So it's very special for me to say that I've done it and I did it at Mid-South yeah. in pretty epic fashion. So, yeah. And I mean, I don't want you to beat yourself up too bad because, mm -hmm. you know, there's other things happening, um, you know, at Steamboat Gravel, you're at almost 7,000 feet of elevation right. and Wisconsin is not. So there's that. No. <laughs> Um, and I know you went <laughs> to like grounded Nebraska and you, I think you and, uh, Marina were, were you DFL there as well in like the shorter distance? Uh, Marina was DFL. Um, I beat her by like 10 seconds. Okay. So yeah. Yeah. But I mean, that day was ex like exceedingly hot. Right. Um, so it's not like you've been like, I don't know, doing all these easy, easy <laughs> things. And it's like, oh, I just didn't feel like it. No, like you've been up against some very, very real challenges and, um, yeah. Do you think you have, do you want to do another century or is it like check done? No, I would love to do more centuries. I would love to do longer distances actually. But again, the whole problem is that I run into that fact that I'm just not fast enough yeah. um, to meet those cutoff times, but I would love to try like a double century. I think that would be a pretty epic achievement and I feel oh like I gosh. could do it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I know you can, you, you, yeah. like you said, you have the endurance. It's just a matter of, will the course be open long enough right. for it to happen? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, well, let's back up a little bit and talk about, you know, your broader involvement with all bodies on bikes. Um, you know, we already talked about you were on the steamboat gravel team, but what inspired you to apply and, you know, what is having a community like all bodies on bikes mean to you? Yeah. So even to back it up a little bit further, um, I started riding, road bikes, right? Like really late in my life. It wasn't until after I met my husband and after we had our daughter that I'm like, oh, I'm going to start riding, um, you know, influenced by my husband who is a road cyclist. And that's where I started. Um, and I have to tell you, just, I never felt like I really fit into that scene and just, you know, my body just never really fit on a road bike. So I did it, but it's not something where, you know, I felt a, immense joy from mm. um, and one of my friends who rode gravel. I'd never heard of it. was like, Hey, you should ride gravel worlds. And like in Nebraska, just take your road bike and put some bigger tires on it. I'm like, okay, let's do that. 
So <laughs> my first experience ever on gravel was in Lincoln, Nebraska, at Gravel Worlds on the privateer course, like 78 miles. I was petrified, <laughs> but I got it done. Heck um, yeah. And that's where I met you, Marley. And like, I started following you on social media and just seeing like that, you know, the activism and the work that you've done to make sure folks in larger bodies and all bodies had a chance to be a part of, you know, cycling. So that's where it started. Um, and then I'm like, I want an epic, like adventure. Let's apply it to Steamboat Gravel. Why not? Yes. That seems pretty epic. So that's kind of the evolution, you know, really a quick evolution description of where I got to this point. Dang. You know, it's all because of all bodies and bikes. I, yeah. I think I knew that. I remember meeting you at Grounded Worlds or not Grounded Worlds, <laughs> Gravel Worlds. <laughs> right. Um, I had COVID. Um, you did have COVID. Yeah. I was like, we were just <laughs> off of Steamboat Gravel, I think. Uh -huh. and I was exhausted and I didn't know yeah. why. I was like, maybe I've just been burning the candle and I had COVID. I, I don't think I gave it to anybody, but um, yeah. I ended up not even riding in that event because I was so sick. Um, I remember. Yeah. Yeah. But good for you doing that 78 because people think Lincoln, think people think Nebraska like, oh, it's in Oklahoma, not hilly. Oh, it is very hilly. <laughs> yeah. It, the gravel, right? I'm the gravel was something I just wasn't expecting. You know, it was pretty chunky. Yeah. And I, I said it was just like terrifying. I had no idea how to descend in gravel, right? I, I really yeah. didn't know how to climb through gravel. So that to me was probably well early on one of the most difficult rides I had ever done just because I wasn't I didn't have the knowledge in the background it just you know my friend's like you could do it so I'm like all right I'll do it and I did DFL that year nice but, but I was okay. so proud right when I came across and I'm like I just did that you know and that was amazing to say yeah. I did it so yeah. that's one of the things I love about you is like just your tenacity of like <laughs> I'm gonna try this and let's do it so um, I also want to back up really quickly. Um, you've said a couple of times, I started cycling late in life, like yeah. I, I'd say middle life. Like, I don't know if you want to tell folks how old you are, because on a podcast you can't see, but like, you're not elderly. Um. <laughs> <laughs> well, getting close to it. I am 50. I actually can't believe that when I say that I'm 50, I don't feel like 50, right? So yeah. I think it's because I have so many young friends. All of you are all so young and I think that helps quite a bit too, so yeah. Yeah, definitely. So anyway, I just want, I wanted to clear that up. So if folks were like, wait, what, what's actually going on here? Um, well, yeah. should we, should we get into your Mid-South ride? Um, yeah. real quickly, um, were you already on, did you already do Payson's podcast? Not yet. Okay. Okay. Um, we got her first, you heard it here first, but, um, <laughs> Beth is going to be on Payson McAlbin's podcast, which is also really exciting. Amazing. I, um, again, what world am I living in right now? Right. right? Just, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, a little a little glimpse into my life. It just kind of takes over. Um, but yeah, so for Mid South, um, what were what were your goals going into the ride? Yeah, so I, as always, my number one goal is to finish. Um, I commit to finishing. Um, you know, I still keep it as a goal. But unless something horribly goes wrong, I know that I will finish. So number one, finish. Number two, just have fun, right? Yes. Um, I know I'm a slow rider and sometimes I have kind of like timelines in my mind of when I should be finishing, but I just take it as an opportunity to enjoy being out on the bike, enjoy being in a new environment, seeing nature around me, right? Meeting new people um, and just having the opportunity to connect, you know, with the land that I'm riding on. So those are always my goals. And I mean, if we're talking like when did I think I was going to finish in my mind? I'm like, Oh, I'll finish in 12 hours. And obviously that kind of got blown out of the, <laughs> the window. Um, what was your, do you remember what your finishing time was? 16 hours, 16 hours. That's, yeah. I mean, I think last year I did it in 14 hours and yeah. 30 minutes or something. So, um, and my unbound time was 16 hours. So, yeah. I mean, it's still a good time. Like, yeah, I'm not focused on that time whatsoever. I also, uh, it was interesting because on the bike, I really lost track of like what time it was and like how long I had been on the bike. I never during that ride ever felt like, oh my gosh, this is horrible. When is it going to finish? I was just having fun and riding. Um, you know, I was tracking my miles. So I knew kind of where I was, but I never, ever felt like get me off this bike. Right. So, and I think that's why I lost track of time. So that is incredible to hear that you never once were like, get me off this bike. Mm -hmm. At any point, did you get to like 
man, I, I, this ride, like this is incredible. I want it to go on forever. I wouldn't say that. <laughs> and do you know why? Because uh, when we finished, right, it was dark out there, right? I'm afraid of the dark um, and I'm afraid of dogs. Mm. And it was really quiet and pitch black out in those gravel worlds, mm. uh, not gravel worlds, gravel roads is what I meant to say. Um, so that in itself had me just kind of uneasy, you know, and I really tried to face my insecurities there and just, just ride and just not think about like bad possibilities. But, um, yeah, I wouldn't say wanted to go on forever only because of that aspect, but that's totally fair. That's (laughs) yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, did you, you, you already talked about, you know, there weren't really any times when you doubted your ability to finish. No. Um, but overall, I mean, it sounds like you enjoyed the ride. Um, I did. If I remember correctly, you you had a ride buddy. I know when you came across the finish line, at what point did you guys link up and start riding together? Yeah, so I'd say right around mile 75 is when we kind of started riding together. She had passed me um, at one point early, earlier. Um, and then she went off faster than me, but I think around mile 75 is where we kind of like reconnected again. And we paid, played a little bit of leapfrog right back and forth. Um, and then when it got dark, um, we finally like met up at that point, because I think both of us were a little uneasy, right. About being in the pitch blackness on the roads alone. So I think around mile 75 is probably where, you know, we reconnected and stayed together. So that's so cool. Um, at what point did the Jeeps catch up to you? I think right before the single track. Okay. A lot of the, a lot of the ride is blending together. Right. So I think it was before the single track. <laughs> yeah. This one. Yeah. They caught up. Did, to us, did so. they? So last year, cause I was out there all alone. Um, you know, they turned on the lights for me. Yeah. They asked me if I wanted music. Did you have that sort of interaction with them at all? Yeah, they gave us lights and it was like so amazing, right? To finally be able to see because we were taking it really slow, like down the descents, right? Because we didn't, we couldn't see, we didn't know like what we were riding on. So it really slowed our time down, not being able to see. I was worried about my battery, you know, too, because I hadn't really planned on being out in the dark quite that long. And I should have brought like an additional, you know, headlights. I should have brought another mm-hmm. battery for my head unit. So like I had everything turned as low as possible. You know, I could barely see from the headlight and then my, my head unit, I didn't have the backlight on. So I had no idea what time it was. I had no idea like where we were, you know? So yeah, I was really grateful for the Jeeps to come. Oh my really God. Awesome people. I, yeah, I, I'm just imagining like conserving as much battery as you can. It <laughs> oh just, gosh. <laughs> At one point I had contemplated, like, let me stop at a farmhouse that looks like maybe, you know, folks would be willing to help and asking if I could buy a flashlight from them and like duct taping it to my bike. (laughs) That was in the back of my mind. Like, how can I like not be afraid of these roads? Yeah. So did you have any encounters with dogs? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And dogs really make me so nervous. They, that's why in my, um, event right up. I talk about the surprise dogs that all of a sudden there they are and chasing. And, you know, I, I feel like most of them were probably friendly, but I don't necessarily know that. Right. Right. It's startling when they are there chasing yeah. you. So. And you're startling them. And it's, dogs exactly. are, I mean, we have, we have wild, I don't know if they're wild, but they feel wild dogs here in Arkansas and it's scary. And honestly, like yeah. that's when I get some of my fastest times is when like I get that adrenaline <laughs> spike uh-huh. and I'm yep. just like Vroom, off the road. So, yeah. Like, yeah. I have a question as someone who is not mid south before <laughs> because I've seen pictures, but I would like some more. What are, who are the Jeeps? Mm. Like I saw the pictures with the Jeeps, but what is happening there? Yeah. Marley, take it? Why don't you take it? Sure. Um, I don't know their, their official name. Yeah. So, so it's, might... it's the red dirt Jeep club of Oklahoma. So Oklahoma is known for its red dirt, um, which I recently learned is like iron ore and iron oxide, um, nice. which is actually bacteria poop from millions and millions of years ago. Um, I went Amazing. deep on some podcasts recently. Right. Anyway, uh, <laughs> um, so it's the Red Dirt Jeep Club and um, Bobby Wintle, who is like the famed Bobby of Mid-South, has made all these incredible relationships with the community. And that's one of them. Um, So the Red Dirt Jeep Club comes out every year and provides um, SAG support. Um, And so um, Mid-South is really unique in that um, it is a fully supported event. So many other events, you know, you have to have your own support crew and your own food and your own everything. And they really, um, although 
Beth, I have a question for you about the aid station, but we'll come back to that because I encountered some issues at the aid station this year. Um, anyway, fully supported. If you need help getting off, um, getting off the road, uh, <laughs> They they give everybody a number to call and um they they do a pretty good job of shuttling folks back and forth um and one of the coolest things is at the end of the night they all kind of line up in a parade behind the DFL and escort yeah. that person into town incredible um, yeah and just really kind generous people who volunteer their time and I remember when I was DFL I felt immense guilt. I was like, I'm sorry, I can't go any faster. Like, it can't be fun to be crawling along at four or five miles an hour. And they were like, we live for this stuff. Like, that is like the highlight of some of their their years. Um, I think they enjoy it when it's a little bit more muddy. Um, this year was very fast and very dry. Um, but, oh, how was that creek crossing for you, actually, Beth? So I went around it. And actually, because I was so far back, there was hardly anybody ahead of me. So that was a different experience. I know I saw a lot of the photos where, you know, there's just tons of people trying to get across at one time and there yeah. was like three of us. So it was totally fine. <laughs> it's so funny. Like you had almost like a deja vu experience of what I had the year before. Yeah. Cause same yeah. when I got like, we're, we're consistently slow. It's not mm -hmm. like, you know, we start out fast. It's like, no, no. we are going to ride the same pace all day long and we're going to get there. Yeah. But that does mean that our day looks different. It um, does. so back to the aid station, um, was there food when you got to the aid, st the first aid station? Yeah, there was some, there wasn't a ton, but I feel like there was probably enough. Okay. You know? Okay. That's good to hear. So. Cause I think I got there maybe five, 10 minutes before you and they had okay. like taken down almost all the tables. Um, I did, I don't think I broke it. Um, but I did, I did the slip and slide. I don't know if you saw the slip and slide that it was wasn't there. there. Oh, okay. It wasn't there. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I did the slip and slide twice, um, which was dumb cause it was cold. Mm. Um, and I like landed on my finger all funny. Um, mm. it, it was a day. But yeah, um, so I want to go back a little bit to this other person that you rode with, because I know at the very end, um, it was, I I almost hate it. I, I kind of hate what happened. And I haven't talked to Bobby about this yet, but I'm going to, because it really felt, and I would love to get your perspective on this, Beth. It really felt like, you know, you both came across and because of the, the crowd, you know, they went across the finish line first and maybe two seconds later you went across, but really you came in together and yeah. then you got all of the celebration and it's not to knock yours, but it's almost like they were like chopped liver. And I know you mm -hmm. were very much like, we need to celebrate Alma or Elma. We need to celebrate Elma. Yes, I agree. And I went over to the announcer, you know, seeing your kind of distress about this, like, hey, we need to celebrate this other person. And the announcer was like, I did. I announced both of them. It's fine. But it really, I could see mm -hmm. the disappointment on their face. Um, have you talked to them at all? You know, I haven't. No. Yeah. Okay. Um, I definitely feel like she deserves some recognition for sure. I've had a lot of recognition, right? But there needs to be more for her as well. Yeah. You know, because the crowd, the way the crowd was, we were going to try to ride in together and like, hold our hands up in the air, but the way the crowd was, it was just so confusing. You can see how slow we were going. I think it was just, it was like overwhelming and confusing. And there was people everywhere. Cause we thought we were going to just like ride across, right? Like an open finish line. And then that's not what it was like. Yeah. You know? So I, I want to make sure she's recognized for sure. Yeah. Well, Elma, if you're listening to this, we are yeah. so proud of you. Ooh. And um, if our paths cross again, um, I want to make sure that you get the full recognition as well. Um, because, I mean, you and Beth did it together. So mm -hmm. this yeah. is us giving Heck a little yeah. bit of recognition to our our small listener base. Thank you, Marley. I appreciate that. Yeah. You know, it's been weighing on, on me a bit too. And I was going to talk to Bobby about it as well. So if Bobby hears this, know that I want to talk to him about it as well. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, you know, it was, it was interesting. So during the DFL party, we were getting updates from ride with GPS. Mm -hmm. They have a, a command center above the bar, above the coffee shop <laughs> and they have little dots That's everywhere amazing. and they're just tracking everybody. Um, and for probably the last three hours, we kept hearing like there's four people. Um, you know, there was the couple, there was the, the two folks from Florida and then there was you and Elma out there. And everybody was like, well, what happens if they all come across together? And that's mm -hmm. what I was rooting for. Like, I wanted all four of you to come down the street and just be like, we're splitting that cow horn skull into <laughs> four parts. Um, <laughs> but they came across, you know, maybe a minute or two before you did. Um, did you see them out there at all? 
Yeah, they zoom past us. Um, I knew that they were back there. So we had a Jeep and then I we knew that there was at least one person was behind us. And I don't know if we were ascending a hill, a little hill or something, but all of a sudden they just like zoomed on past us. Mm. And then we met up with them at the start of the single track section and they took off before us. And then we didn't see them again at that point. So yeah. Yeah. Well, very cool. Very cool. Um, can you talk to us a little bit about, about that single track section? <laughs> I didn't ride it. That's okay. Yeah. Totally petrifying at night. But the really kind thing that happened was again, both uh, Elma and I had really low like um, lights because we were trying to conserve, right? The battery power. But Bobby's wife, Crystal came with this like lantern. I don't know. It was just like, oh, and it just illuminated like the forest. And so she went with us for the entire single track section, oh, uh, which I thought was really kind of her to do. Right. That just is really kind. Us. So yeah, it, that was very like touching for me that she was like, Hey, I'm coming. Wait, I'll help you oh, guys out. And give you some I, light. So, um, yeah, last year I did the single track in the, in the pitch black and had no idea what I was riding yeah. through. And then when I went through it this year, I was like, oh, shit, this is kind of hard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I was pretty worried about it. I'm like, I don't need to crash out here. So I have no problem just walking through this so that I yeah. don't crash out. Um, but I also want to say that I really, truly believe that um, the Chase lounge or Chase couch, whatever you call it, wouldn't be there. And, you know, I felt really heartbroken about that. And you know, as I was riding, I'm like, it's not going to be there. And I was so excited to sit on that couch because I ride a salsa cutthroat and it just, it was like meant to be that my bike was supposed to be on the couch. So I, again, I thought it's not going to be there. And I was really, really like emotionally happy and surprised that they waited for us. Yeah. And I think that was really meaningful, right. That they stayed out there a long time, just making sure that we got our chance to be on that that cheese. So I have, I have goosebumps hearing you talk about that because yeah. it, it really is special and your photos are going to be cooler than everybody else's. Cause the rest of us are bright daylight. So my photo is easy to find because it's the, at the very end, <laughs> I already looked at it and I'm like, I wonder how I find my photo. Oh, let me scroll to the end. There it is. <laughs> nice. So. I haven't gone and looked for mine yet. Um, easy to find, <laughs> but we'll make sure we put that, um, a link to that photo gallery in, in the show notes. Um, but um, Maggie, I want you to ask some questions. <laughs> okay. I probably have some questions. <laughs> well, <laughs> we've talked about like the race in general, but let's focus in now on the fact that first of all, on this podcast today, we have two reigning DFL reverse champions. So let's just throw that out there. We are in the presence of greatness. We already knew that. But like <laughs> well, Beth, Beth mentioned, um, so we have like an internal Slack, um, group channel whatever um and beth mentioned that like the gauntlet has been thrown you yeah. know two years in a row mm -hmm. but i kind of have conflicting emotions about that like yeah. and uh, beth i'm sure you can attest this like you can't plan to be dfl no no like you got to ride your ride and whatever Absolutely. happens happens um however you know all bodies on bikes is not an exclusive club so very true Otherwise, I, mean, I would not be allowed to play. That's not true. <laughs> that's not true. Um, you know, I, I think we could say uh, optimistically that whoever gets it next year will hopefully be a, an all bodies on bikes person as well, since, you know, we believe all bodies are good bodies. Absolutely. Yeah. Sorry, I interrupted your question asking, Maggie. You're fine. You're fine. <laughs> and I just um, want to add to that, that I hope I never DFL again, right at mid South. And I, I told myself, I'm like, I want to ride this like every year. It, that just means I need to train a little bit harder. Right. So that I'm not that slow. I want somebody else to know what that feels like to like accomplish something big. Right. And to have that celebration at the end, it's really important that somebody else feels that, um, I kind of DFL events quite a bit. I just don't want that to ever happen again at mid South. And you know, I will make sure it doesn't happen. And part of me is like, I wouldn't mind doing like the 50 next year so that I can be there at the end. Like I kind of was a little jealous seeing like the party and the shenanigans you guys yeah. were, you know, yeah. having, I'm like, I didn't get to see any of that, you know, cause like came in so late, you know? So there's that little piece of me that maybe I'll do the 50 next year. So I can be part of that celebration right? Yeah. for yeah. somebody else. So, and it, it was incredible having, you know, been in that exact same spot literally a year earlier yeah. to watch you come across. And I had all those emotions myself of, 
wow, I remember what this was like to come into town and to, to be completely overwhelmed and proud and happy and sad. And, um, I, I, did you feel any sadness that it was over? You know, to me, it almost felt like this was like the pinnacle and damn, this is going to be over really quickly. So not at the events. I mean, I was just, I was overcome with emotions. I mean, if you see the videos and the photos of me, I'm just like crying, right. And sobbing. Um, so I didn't feel that at that point. Right. I was just like, I just did this finally after chasing this for so long. And I can't believe what's like happening in front of me. Um, you know, just with the the party that was going on. So yeah, it was, it was great. Yeah. That makes so much sense. And again, I interrupted you, Maggie. Sorry. I'm You're shutting fine. up. But the thing is now we've answered all the questions <laughs> that we had lined up there. Um, like, I know Mid-South, the two big things that people talk about, I feel like, are hugs from Bobby and the DFL party. But, Beth, did you have, like, any frame of reference where you, did you pull into town and be like, oh, this is what I expected? What were your, what were your feelings when you pulled into the DFL party? Uh, I was pretty overwhelmed. Like, I knew, I mean, I saw, like, pictures, right, from Marley's DFL right. last year. But I'm like, that's because it was Marley. Everybody loves Marley. Everybody knows Marley. Right. So as we came around the corner and like there was people like running down right the road with us and they're like, here, take a beer. You're here and just cheering and screaming. And then I'm like, oh, my gosh, look at it in the distance. Right. There's like there's like all these people and there's music. Um, so I truly wasn't quite expecting that. Right. I mean, obviously, I knew there was going to be something, but seeing that was just kind of amazing. Right. Yeah. yeah. So and then. I just didn't realize like the, like how many different types of people were there. Right. I just, mm -hmm. you know, read a write up that somebody did and shared pictures of me. And they're like, yeah, there was people from the community. There was pro cyclists, there was, you know, people in between and just like all kinds of people were there. So that makes me emotional to see, right. You know, knowing yeah. that it's, it was just a whole different group of people from different backgrounds that were there. So yeah. Um, and you, you won't know this because you weren't there, but you know, leading up. So basically everybody was in the bar, we were dancing, having a good time. And me and Kevin from ride with GPS were tracking like four miles out, three miles out, two miles out. And when you got to one mile out, we basically turned off the music in the bar and said, everybody outside right now. And you know, the music got turned back on outside. Um, but the announcer, Trevor kept talking about, hey guys, like this is really exciting. This is really important, but I want you all to recognize how hard these folks have been working. Speaking about you and Elma and the other folks and talking yeah. about, you know, yeah, you guys have been done riding your bike for six, eight hours. You've already showered. You've eaten a meal. These folks have literally been on their bikes since eight o'clock this morning and really talking about how hard of an effort you put in. Um, and I, I put it out to our Instagram followers, All Bodies on Bikes account, you know, what questions do you want to ask? And somebody asked, um, you know, what's it like to be genuinely celebrated for DFL versus feeling like it's more for show? And I think because of the intentionality, and I want your perspective as well, but it really does feel like we're celebrating your effort. And it's not just, oh, we're doing this because it's like a feel good thing. I don't know. Thoughts? Yeah, I would have to say... Um... I agree with that. And especially with, um, I've just been inundated too with social media posts and like all these people, I don't know who they are, have been posting about like, you know, what it means to be DFL and the tenacity and just, you know, so I definitely, I, maybe I didn't feel it completely like at the party. I mean, I did, but then just, you know, afterwards, like everything I've seen and the messages I've been getting from people that I don't know. And, you know, so I think it's amazing. Right. And yeah, it's easy to forget a slow people are out there for a long, long, long time. Like you said at the riders meeting, breakfast, lunch, dinner, and probably the midnight snack for me too. So yeah, yeah, it, it well, feels really good. Another question we got was about your nutrition strategy. Um, so how did you, how did you fuel during the day? What was your plan for that? Did it work? Anything you would change? Yeah, for the most part, it worked. Um, I have a hard time eating solid food on rides. Um, I don't know why that is, but it's just like my body gets angry when I try to eat things. Um, so I rely a lot on gels um, and then some food. Um, I do think, though, if I do something quite that long again, I have to practice eating, you know, food. 
Mm. Uh, because by the end of the night, I felt like the gels were, <laughs> they were like poison. I don't know how to explain it. It was really horrible by the end of the night. Um, do you have any idea how many gels you went through during the day? Um, I was trying to do like two an hour. So wow. I packed a lot. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Maggie's face looks horrified. I uh, can't do the gels ever. So yeah. Yeah, I, and I'm bad at math, but I can do two times sixteen, and yeah, that's there was so a many trails. That last hour, I probably didn't eat as much as I should have because I was just mm -hmm. excited and I wanted to be done. I mean, I had like a turkey sandwich in there, and at the end of the night, I was like, I probably should have made more of those because that actually, you know, like sounds good now instead of gels. Um, I don't, I don't like a lot of sweet stuff, but I do try to bring like those candy orange slices out of mm -hmm. everything. I like that. Um, uh, I had some bananas. Um, I'm trying to think what else I might've had in there, but mostly gels. I wouldn't recommend that. Definitely. I'm not a nutritionist and probably wasn't the best way to go about it, but, um, but it worked for you. You felt strong. But all it day. worked. Yeah. yeah. I felt good all day. I mean, I think, you know, the key there and what I've heard from many nutritionists is like, you just got to get calories, yeah. whatever those yeah. calories are. And if it works for your body, that's what matters. And I did have some bacon at the first rest stop. Mm -hmm. I normally am like, why do you want bacon on a bike ride? Right. But it actually tasted so good. I'm like, oh, no, I understand. That was like that perfect. Was, it was good bacon too. Yeah I, yeah. I liked it a lot. I went back for more. So yeah. And Maggie, you would have appreciated this. They had scratch margaritas. Heck yes. Yeah. <laughs> I do appreciate this ever so much. <laughs> I knew you would. I didn't have any because I'm not, I'm still not drinking, but right. um that's amazing. Yeah, yeah I did run out of water out there. That's one thing. It's never happened to me. Um, and I can't quite articulate like when that happened. I know um, it, it was in the evening and I should have like filled up at the last. I don't say I can't. I don't know if it was an aid station or there was like the section that we passed where it was a split off. You know, the hundred went this way, 50 went that way. And they had like a water station. Yeah. Yep. Yep. yep and I'm like, yep. Oh, I don't think I need that. And I should have, right. Because I ran out and I started to get a little panicked. Mm. Um, but it was just like amazing. Like this, you know, resident that was out like doing something in their yard saw us and we're like, are you guys riding still? Do you need water? And so she let us stop and use the bathroom and gave us water. Oh, um, wait, you went to the snacks. bathroom in a random person's so, house. I, we did. House. <laughs> and she found us on social media and was like, we are so proud of you that you finished. Oh, so yeah, she oh, reached out to us. That is incredible. <laughs> um, also, I love that you went to the bathroom in the middle or er, in somebody's yeah. house. Like, yeah, that is the true spirit of community. Yeah, it was amazing i'm gonna send her a little thank you note because i think that was just like awesome but yeah they were willing to let us just come in their house and use their bathroom oh, and... that's that's incredible yeah. uh when i did ragbri last year similar um but that's yeah. like you know a whole different level of event um but yeah. that is so so cool um did you have any mantras that you kept repeating to yourself to push through the challenge or you know anything you told so, yourself over and over yeah so i actually don't do that um when generally what I'll do is, um, as the hours progress on, I just try to make like a little goal, like, okay, next five miles, you have five miles to go. Okay. And then I hit that five miles. Okay. Now you have five more miles to go. So I try to break it up into chunks and not look at that big picture because I think that can get overwhelming and pretty daunting to be like, I'm on mile 20. I have 80 miles to go, you know, no, I have five more miles to go. Oh, I have another five. So that's, that's how I break it up. Now that didn't quite work once it turned dark, right? Because I mentioned I didn't have my light on and my head. Oh, yeah. You, couldn't, mm -hmm. you didn't know yeah. what mile you were at. Yeah, I didn't know. But I mean, I kind of know, right? After riding, you know, as much as I have, I kind of know where five miles is. You know? Yeah. Well, let's talk real quickly. You've been doing 10 miles a day every day since <laughs> January 1st, right? I have been ever since January 1st. I've been in Heck a challenge. Yeah. Um, started off, I think with 20 people, maybe 30 people. Um, and, uh, we're down to two people. Um, and yeah, I can't stop, but yes, at least a minimum of 10 miles a day I ride. So, uh, interesting enough after I finished, uh, mid South, I slept for like three hours, if that, and then I got up and rode my bike for 10 miles around Stillwater on Sunday morning. Before and this I is why people don't get us. Because <laughs> I'm like, I, I can't that. lose this challenge. Like, I need I've to get my it. miles in. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it's funny. I did see a social media post that. by M, who I think is who you're competing mm -hmm. with, um, saying that this challenge might keep going until next year. I don't know. I know it might. It could. I'm not going to give up. <laughs> How? 
have you have you found Heck that yeah. to be like beneficial towards your mental health or like what what's been the impact of riding 10 miles a day yeah so actually um it's been really beneficial a couple of things i mean it has made me really consistent in my training right so certainly i'm not always only riding 10 miles a day, right? I still have to incorporate my training in there, but because I've been doing this so long, I can't find an excuse now to not ride. Right. Mm. I, I rode through COVID, which I wouldn't recommend, but I did ride through being sick with COVID. Mm. You know, I've made sure I've been able to ride. My daughter plays hockey. We go out of town on the weekends quite a bit. I bring my bike. I find some place to ride, you know, we mm. work it in, or I bring my power pedals, right. And change out the pedals on the bike in the gym at the hotel. Um, so it's just become a part of my life and it's something I actually look forward to. Um, and it's just, it's made me really consistent, uh, with training. Um, I hate being on the trainer. I have to tell you that. So that's I horrible, too. but, um, do trainer yeah, miles count towards the 10 mile yeah, a day? Yeah. Any kind okay. of miles will count. So cool. Yeah. That makes sense. Especially since you live in Wisconsin and typically mm -hmm. there's winter, although, it didn't look like you guys had a winter this year and I can see your garden in the backyard and it looks like you're yeah. ready to go for the spring. Yeah. It's, it's cold out there though. Actually, mm. I was pretty, I was pretty upset when I got back home and you know, I was wearing my flip flops and my t-shirt because that's what I wore when I left Stillwater. I'm like, oh my gosh, it is like winter, even though there's no snow. So mm. that was a little shock <laughs> with the weather. That's um, fair. I also wanted to mention with that 10 mile a day challenge, um, it is a fundraising challenge. So Kevin, the person who put the challenge together, we had to pay into it essentially half of the pot he's giving to ride for racial justice. And then the other half is going to the winner of the challenge. Um, and I've already decided if I do happen to win that my share, I will donate to all bodies on bikes. So, oh, and it's still open for donations. I just have to tell you that. So you don't yeah. have to be a um, rider. We will put the link in both the social media post and okay. the link in or the the show notes. But is it an easy to know link? Like it's off easy. The top? Oh you, no, no, it's no, not easy. No. It's not easy. <laughs> no. Okay. No, easy. no it's it. not. No. <laughs> <laughs> that is okay. Um, well, I only have like a couple of last questions. So you mentioned training a couple times. Um, mm -hmm. and I feel like I remember you talking about this last year. Have you been working with a coach? And what has that been like? Yeah, I do work with a coach, uh, Darcy. Uh, oh my gosh. I just forgot Darcy's last name. Don't listen to this Darcy, Darcy, <laughs> Darcy Murphy. Oh my gosh. Uh, from CTS, uh, coaching. Um, uh, it's been wonderful. I'm a challenge for her. And I know that, um, because I'm not always as consistent, right. As I probably should be. Well, ever since January I have been, but, uh, she's really helped me deal with, um, just a lot of like, fears that I have about the bike and she's helped me be able to like push past where I think I should be. Right. So she challenges me quite a bit. I'm slow. I'll probably always be slow, but she's really helped me build just a lot of confidence. Yeah. Um, like, so yeah, I'm very I, I mean, appreciative I've, of her. Yeah. I've personally seen your confidence grow and it's been incredible yeah. to watch. Yeah. Um, and you know, I think other mm -hmm. riders will look to you as a mentor now, especially, you know, with your attitude of, you know, there was never a time when I thought about quitting and, no. um, I know that I could do it. That's such a refreshing, uh, approach, I think to long distance events. So for thank sure. you for that. Yeah. And I definitely, I definitely feel like, uh, it's not an obligation because that sounds like something negative, but I like finding the riders out on the course that you can tell they're struggling. Right. And they're, they're just doubting their abilities of being able to do it. And I think it's important to like, raise them up and give them that boost. Like it's hard, but you can do it. All you have to do is keep moving forward. If you have to walk, you walk. If you can pedal, you pedal, but you just need to keep moving forward, sitting down and feeling sorry for yourself and upset. It's not going to get you to the finish line. Just move. Yeah. However you need to move, just keep moving. So I'm going to record. Well, I guess we did just record that. I was going to say, <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to, tell that to myself when I can't get out of bed in the morning. It's like Marley, just one foot in front of the other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's all yeah. we need to do. Um, sure. well, Maggie, any, any last questions before we get to our two last questions? Um, I would say just like Beth, for the people that are, are sitting here going, yeah, I can tell myself that I'm out on the course, but I don't believe that I have a place on the course in the first place. What would you say to somebody that's doubting their ability or their 
purpose even to go out and do an event like this? Everybody has a purpose, right? Everybody is valuable, you know, and just because maybe you don't look a certain way or you don't have a big expensive bike or you haven't trained enough, just go do it. Right. Yep. Yeah. That's, that's what I have to say. Just do it. Just yeah. Don't. Do you have any other big events on your calendar this year? I do. So, um, well, big events. I have a bunch actually. I have the rough road 100 in Illinois next month. Um, is that another bike- century? I- that just I might actually change to century because it's a flat course. So Ooh. I feel like I could probably could. Um uh Tim is going to be riding that also, Tim from All Bodies and Bikes, because uh, he lives down in that area. I have Unbound, Grounded Nebraska, um SBT. I think that's probably everything. Okay. There might be some other ones in there. So nice. Yeah. It's a it's a full full calendar. Um, just a little full, yes. Yeah. Um, well, one other question we got um before we go into our very last two questions was did you have like a high point and a low point of the ride? Specifically, they phrased it as a rosebud and a thorn, which I really like. But yeah, I'll start with the low point. And the low point really was when it got dark, how mm-hmm. just scared I was, right? And I really had to deal with that fear of I, I'm a city kid, city girl, right? I grew up in the city. So being out in the countryside where it's just, it was pitch black, right? And I could hear creatures and normally I like creatures, but I could just hear things. And, you know, I was nervous about being out there alone. You know, what if something happens? Um, So that was the low point. I was really fearful. I mean, I dealt with it, right? And I moved past it, but that was the low point. High point, I can't say there's one specific high point, right? Because I just had a lot of fun out there. I was able to meet people um, and see old friends. So I think just all of that was a high point for me. Um, And maybe just knowing, you know, once I hit Stillwater that like, I'm going to finish this was amazing for me. So maybe that's the high point. Just knowing like, I got this, it's going to happen. So yeah. Dang. I love it. Um, and I would be completely remiss if I didn't acknowledge that you're also an indigenous cyclist. Um, I am. I'm, I'm looking at your, um, your Instagram post right now. Um, I would love for you to tell us what, what tribe you're from and what, um, the connection to the land meant to you. And, um, cause you, you mentioned it in your Instagram post and I would just love to hear more of that from you. Yeah. So, uh, my family is from Northern Wisconsin. We're part of the bad river, um, tribe of Ojibwe. Or you can also say Chippewa. We prefer Ojibwe. Um, and I think what was also very meaningful, and I mentioned this in my post that, you know, Bobby and crew acknowledge, right, the land that we're riding on and the land that, you know, a part of. So that's important. Um, I just see a lot of events where that just isn't acknowledged. Even in northern Wisconsin, you know, some of these athletic events, there's no like acknowledgement of that. Um, so that that was pretty special for me. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for that. Um, and I, I had meant to bring it up sooner and I apologize that I didn't bring it up sooner. Um, but, um, yeah, I am, I'm so insanely proud of you. Um, just like I've mentioned it probably three or four times now, but just seeing your confidence grow. I remember our first steamboat gravel call. Um, I think you said something of, I, I don't, I feel like an imposter. I don't know that okay. I can do this. Mm-hmm. And hearing you talk about now that, no, I'm strong. I'm slow, yeah. but I'm strong. Um, is just such a, it's not even a transformation. It's just growth of who you always were inside. Yeah. And I truly hope other people can feel that too. Right. Like other new cyclists, um, you know, I think it's an evolution, right? You kind of have to, you know, if you're coming in with those feelings, it'll take some time, right. To feel like you belong, but it'll happen for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you. Um, Maggie, anything else before we wrap up? I think we're set other than freaking congratulations. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Have you caught I up on have... I was going to say I'm still riding the high but I'm also feeling some of the lows today. So okay. it's it's a hard day for me. I yeah. had a really hard time. Like I jumped right back into work and I probably should have taken another worst. I should have taken a day off because it just has been such a whirlwind of a day and I'm still getting tagged in a lot of social media and like so yeah, just processing all of it. It's just been a little overwhelming in a good way. Right. Yeah. I say that. So, but I yeah, probably well, needed a day off, but if you ever want to talk about it, um, that has kind of been my life for the last three years of, you know, these insane dopamine highs followed by a crash and 
Um, thankfully, you know, it comes back as soon as I get back out on my bike and ride. So that's my best yeah. advice to you is, I mean, obviously you have been cause the 10 miles a day challenge, but just getting out there and riding. So, yeah. okay. Our very last two questions. Um, I, I have a hunch of what the first one might be. Uh, but, uh, what is your perfect day outside? I love riding my bike, right? And <laughs> no, what? <laughs> Imagine that. We should have talked so, about that. <laughs> but not only riding my bike, but I love being with my friends, right? And I mean, I love meeting new people. But you know, on the trip to um, Mid South, I got to stop in and see AC on the way down, and we went out riding. And, and that AC was like, is our Kansas City chapter. Kansas lead. City, yeah. Yep. Sorry. Um, and that was just like so amazing, right? I just got to ride and it was a beautiful day and that was like perfect for me. Nice. So, amazing. Yeah. yeah. And then Maggie, you want to take the last one? Let's do it. So you talk about bikes a lot and you're getting to talk <laughs> about them even more these days. What's something else about Beth? What's something you wish you got to talk about a little bit more? Yeah, I'd love to talk more about like my indigenous background, right? And kind of yeah. like what that means and you know, I'll just say this, I'm white presenting, right? So a lot of folks don't realize, you know, you know, who I am, who I truly am because of that. So yeah, that's probably yeah. something I'd love to talk more about. Heck yeah. yeah. Well, I'm going to bring that up next time we hang out or have a phone call because cool. uh, <laughs> I would love to learn more about that and what that means and where your family comes from and all that good stuff. So thank you. Yeah. Um, Beth, this has been an absolute pleasure. Um, I hope you get some downtime soon. Um, my biggest recommendation is turn off notifications on Instagram. Um, <laughs> it's has saved me so much mental anguish. Um, you know, those little dopamine yeah. hits are great, but just turn off the notifications. <laughs> I might have to do that. And I actually am pretty tired. Good thing this isn't being visually recorded because I got bags under my eyes here. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, well, congratulations on an absolutely epic ride. Um, I can't wait to ride with you again. It sounds like I'll see you sooner rather than later at Unbound. Yes, actually, you're going to see me at the bike packing weekend. So. I will also see you at the bike packing weekend yes. in May. Yes. Um, speaking of, a um, couple of quick all bodies on bikes announcements. Um, if folks have seen the photos, which you will also see um, for this post, um, we have kits now that are open to the public. Um, we partnered with Champion System to make them. They come in kid sizes through 6XL. Um Turns out to be fairly true to size. Um, we've we've heard the sleeves are a little long, um, but if you get the short sleeve jersey, you can adjust the, the sleeve length. Um, but if you go to allbodiesonbikes.com, the kits are there. Um, Beth, you wore the jacket. Did it fit well, okay. perform well, all those things? Yeah, I think it was great. Um, I love the fact that it didn't ride up, actually. So many, like, jackets and, you know, everything, it just rides up, and I didn't have that problem. Yes, so. We love to hear that. And I wore the jersey, the long sleeve jersey and the vest. And those also did not ride up, yeah. even though we're, they were a little snugger on the hips, mm -hmm. which is typical for me. Um, so go get your all bodies on bikes kits now. And then uh, one other announcement. Well, we've got a million events coming up. Check out allbodiesonbikes.com for all of those, including every week we're doing a Zwift ride on Monday nights. Um, it is the only time I get on the trainer is Monday nights and, um, <laughs> but join us. We have a discord channel and we just talk and we use the banded together function so You can ride as slow or as fast as you want. Um, so all bodies on bikes.com slash events to get all that info. Um, and finally we have a bike packing trip coming up in, um, Western Massachusetts over Labor Day weekend. Um, okay. we're partnering up with the venture out project, which works to get queer, um, folks into the outdoors. Um, and that trip, we're actually charging money for it because of insurance and we're partnering with this other group, but there are still three spots available. So you'll get to bike pack with me and Jacob, who is our Western Massachusetts chapter leader. Um, mm. But please do check out allbodiesonbikes.com. We've got resources there. We've got events. We've got merchandise. Um, we've got a lot of stuff going on. So yeah, we do. We do. We do indeed. Um, and Beth, this has been a joy and go get some rest. Yes. I'm going to try. I have to get my 10 miles in though first. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Well, um, daylight's fading and go get your 10 miles in. <laughs> Thank you. This is an All Bodies on Bikes podcast powered by Feisty Media. The show is produced by Maggie and Marley and edited by the team at Feisty Media. Thanks for listening.